Let's hold our Bibles up. Say, this is my Bible. It is a letter from God to me. It is about me. As I hear the inspired word of God this morning, I will have what it says. I can be what it says because I believe it's true and I'm a doer of the word. Somebody say, praise the Lord, I'm going to do the word. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40. I want to talk about this morning. I called this an experienced champion rightly applying a word from the Lord. I believe when I said that uh, I was in a room full of people that knew how to uh, uh, operate according to God's leading and according to His power, that I also said I was in a room full of champions that... Uh, I guess I shouldn't go to Ezekiel when I told you to go to Isaiah. In a room full of champions that know how to take a word from the Lord and apply it in their life. See, the way that I'm going to have what the Lord says, not only when I say it, cooperate, I, I used that word earlier. When I say cooperate, I mean take that word and apply it in your life. And as we apply that word in our life, then we're going to have what that word was, what that word is, and how it continues to stay alive. The only way that a word from the Lord can, can be hampered or die before it is fulfilled in my life. See, now I'm not talking about everybody's life. I'm not talking about around me. But in my life is for me to just lay down and stop and say, well, you know, uh, I guess that wasn't for me. Either it was for you or, it, or uh, you're, you don't cooperate with it. Uh, God doesn't change his mind. The Bible says that uh, his uh, promises are yes and amen. When he gives us a word, it is yes and amen. In uh, Isaiah 40, 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew... That doesn't mean lay down and quit. An eagle makes a choice. Halfway through an eagle's life... They lose their beak, they lose their talons, and they lose their feathers. And they make a choice at that day. Now, that doesn't sound like abundance, does it? <laughs> Actually, the way you and I look at it, it looks pretty ugly. Because it doesn't look like the eagle that God created. But God created this eagle to live an abundant life from start to finish by renewing that eagle halfway through his life. Amen. And he makes a choice whether he's going to lay down and die at that point or he's going to be renewed and he's going to continue to soar and he's going to continue to go on. I worked with uh, somebody one time in a, in a feedlot. They wore a t-shirt that said it's hard to soar with eagles when you work with turkeys. And I thought about that this week, and I don't know why that came up this week when I, was, when I was studying, but I thought about that fact. A lot of times, we make a choice to be uh, surrounded by people that don't have the vision of being renewed, having their strength like a brand new eagle. See, when that, e when that eagle grows a new beak grows new talons, grows new feathers. It looks like the very eagle that God created from the beginning. And it's a choice that he makes whether he's going to get up and soar again or he's going to be affected. Too many times we're affected by the people that, that surround us instead of affecting the people that we surround or surrounding ourselves with the people that will cause us to rise to a new place. I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I believe that I want to be surrounded by people that have greater vision than I have. 
Because if I am surrounded by people that have greater vision than I have, then I'm going to bring my vision up to a higher level instead of taking it down to somebody else's. And when I take it down, then what I've done is I've backed off of that place that God wants me to be. When he tells us, those that wait upon the Lord, and we realize that in this place, um, the eagle's renewed. The eagle's strength is renewed. Uh, he becomes brand new all around him. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have a mirror to look in whenever he doesn't look like the creation of God. And too many times, that's what we do. We stand at that mirror and we look and we go, Man, Lord, I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, the Lord didn't do it. When it doesn't line up with what God's Word says, God didn't do that to you, but the devil has a plan. And I'm going to make a choice whether I'm going to stay right there. I went to a, a Zig Ziglar. How many know who Zig Ziglar is? I went to a Zig Ziglar, uh, I, I guess you'd call, well, it wasn't a, it was a training time, yeah. It was a training time. And he told a story about his grandmother who would, uh, she cooked biscuits. David will appreciate this. He was talking about his grandmother cooking bread last night. And just made my mouth water. And uh, he said his grandmother would, she was cooking biscuits. And, um, and the biscuits that she was making, she would have to let them sit on the cabinet and wait until they rose and then put them in the, uh, the oven. And he said one time his grandmother pulled a, a tray of biscuits out of the out of the oven and they was, wasn't very tall. She hadn't let them stay on the cabinet and rise high enough. She said they got cooked in the squat. Too many times we get cooked in the squat. Too many times we get about halfway to the place that God wants us to be and we just quit and we just give up. Instead of seeing if that eagle had done that, then what would happen? That eagle wouldn't make it. That eagle wouldn't, eagle wouldn't live on. But God's plan is for us to be renewed by that strength. I want to take you to somebody else. I want to take you to Sarah. Sarah had a promise from God. Women, don't be afraid of what I'm about to say. She was 90 years old. Do you know that when she was 90 years old, that, that King Abimelech saw her and thought she was so beautiful, he wanted to in, it put her in his harem. I mean, I, I, I know all the ladies want to believe that and want to be in that place. But God also promised her that she would have a baby. And that's the part I knew you didn't want to hear. Is, uh... <clears throat> but she had to make a choice whether she was going to believe the promise of God. Whether she was... Here was a lady that at 90 years old was so beautiful that a king desired to add her to his harem. And then she had to ha ha make a choice whether she was going to believe God and she was going to move. Now we realize that there was some little trip ups in there and that she gave Hagar to, to uh, Abraham and thought that was the plan but found out that wasn't the plan and she just stood and went on in that promise and fulfilled the promise of God. God makes promises to us, gives us a word. See, she had to either operate on that word or she would had to give up on that word and quit. Go to 1 Kings chapter 17. <clears throat> when I, uh, we're going to look at verse 8 through 16. And when I called in a few weeks ago, you'll recognize that I read this word to you, uh, I believe during the offering time, um, when I was, uh, I don't know, somewhere. We'll just leave it at that. I do remember where I was. I was in... Uh, Oklahoma City, uh, because I was sitting with uh, our Pastor Clay and uh, having breakfast when I gave this word. And I had three people from three tables around me that got up and came over and says, thank you for that word. We needed that this morning. We were sitting at the, at the breakfast table when, uh, when I shared that, when I, uh, when I talked to you. <clears throat> and uh, I thought it was uh, exciting because... Uh, because they listened and received the word. See, that's one of the things that we do. We realize that what we've got to do is when I receive the word, 
Do I receive it for me or do I receive it for somebody else? Do you know that when I study and when I read, somebody will call me and say, what are you doing? I say, I'm studying. Well, are you studying for Sunday? No, I'm just studying. I study for me. I study so that I get a word from the Lord, not just so that I can bring a word here. I can't bring a word here if I don't have a personal word from God. And we've got to realize that when we get in, it's not important how much teaching that I hear. It's not important how many preachers I can listen to on the radio or I can get their CDs in the, uh, the store or in the mail and listen to. But it's important at how I take that word. I call this an experienced champion rightly applying a word from the Lord. Because it has to be a word from the Lord that is embedded and empowered in us by the Holy Spirit so that it becomes for me. It's not for somebody else. Although it is for them also, but it's a word for me. And it's a word what God wants to do in our lives. 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 8 through 16. The word of the Lord came to him saying, this is talking about Elijah. Arise and go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon. And there dwell there. See I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Now look, look up for just a minute before we go on. There's, three, there's two things that happened here. God gave Elijah a word. But Elijah had to make a choice. What are you going to do? He made a choice whether he was going to sit there by that brook that had dried up and wait and see if the ravens were going to bring him any more food so that he could at least eat before he died of dehydration or if he was going to get up and do what the Lord said. The other thing that happened here is the Lord hadn't given the widow the word yet. He says, I've commanded a widow to provide for you. But we're going to find out exactly where that widow was when he got there. So we realize she had not received a word from the Lord yet. But Elijah was told to operate just as she had received the word already. Because he was carrying the word that he was going to give to her. Let's go on. Verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, the widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please, please bring me a little cup of water that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now here she gets the word. Bring me a morsel of bread. We could judge her. We could judge Elijah. We could go, well, you know, Elijah was the prophet of God. He's going to follow God. You're the king that God placed here in this. When we sang that song, said the king of kings, capital K, Jesus is the king of the small k. God, with, as children of God, God has created us to be kings. He's created us to be prophets and priests. To him. And so we should operate just to see Elijah was just a man. He just had the same choice that you and I have every day. And, and as he got up and went, now the woman, the widow, she has exactly the same choice. Verse 12, so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as, I, as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me and afterward some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. Now she's going to get the word. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. 
And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Choice. What choice are you going to make? What choice? You know, sometimes when we don't have any other choice, doing whatever the Lord says just seems like it's a good thing to do. It's like, man, I've tried everything else. Do you know that if we try what the Lord says first, we never have to go through all those other things. If I just stand on what God says, stand on His Word, know that He says that He'll provide for me in all things. You know, and unfortunately, we get in a place that we start looking. By the way, I heard uh, yesterday, actually I might even have been on the constant negative news when I heard this, that the, the depression's over. They finally realized that enough of us weren't participating in their recession that they decided to turn to a depression that now it's over. And uh, I thought, well, I'm glad they finally got the revelation that they don't have to live that way. We get into a place that we realize that we can't be moved by what everybody else is doing, what everybody else says. I'm only moved by what God says. I'm only moved by the direction that he says. When, his, when he give us the word and he, he put his spirit inside of us. And if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, today would be a good day. We come into a place that we realize that his spirit makes that word alive inside of us. It makes us stand in a place that we say, I will not compromise what God says. I will live in abundance, as he said. When... when uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, the Lord sent uh, John Ben Dixon all the way from South Africa just to give me a word. Somebody says, well, but he gave me a word too. See, But what we have to realize is that was a word for me. That was a word for God. This is what the Lord told me la last week. He says, uh, you know, I sent John all the way from South Africa to give you a word. And he says, and that word was for Weatherford, but I want you to take that word to Nigeria. So I thought it was really funny that the Lord sent a South African from <laughs> South Africa to the United States to turn around and take it back to Africa again. Because it's God's plan that we walk in fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before. It is God's plan that we live in that place and know that His Word is for me. Now, I'm going to tell you, we had to make a choice. I had to make a choice on Sunday morning. And I know that most of you couldn't see that I had a, uh, Kleenex in my hand. Because you had Kleenex in your hand too. <clears throat> but I had to make a choice. Am I going to continue to just, well, let's see what happens. Or am I going to continue to live in what that word was and live in a place? I mean, it was all scripture. Fullness, fatness, and abundance. That's not just some prophecy that somebody brought. But he backed it up with what, what the Bible says. You can find every place, you know, and, and uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know about you, but I struggle sometimes with uh, my weight going up and down, and I realize it's based on uh, how much chocolate I eat that <laughs> has that, because I like chocolate. It's discipline, that's right. So, there's certain things about fatness that I don't like. But when you look at what God's Word says... God's Word says He wanted the fat lamb. He wanted the fat bullock. He wanted, because the fatness is a sweet savor to God. Do you know that you living in fatness, and I'm not talking about physically right now, but you living in more than enough. See, fatness just means more than enough. It just means that you've had more than your share. And God wants us to live in that place because it's a sweet savor to Him. It becomes an aroma that is, brings Him glory. We sang a song about glorious. God is glorious. God wants you and I to live a glorious life right here so that we can glorify Him. It says that we are 
the, the fragrance of God in the earth. And I know that when I live in fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before, what I'm doing is I am living in a place that I can be the fragrance of God in the earth. So I'm going to share a, a couple of testimony about some things that, that happened uh, this week. By the way, if you were in prayer time on Wednesday night, you know that uh, our prayer pastor said, Next. And my wife and I have been saying that all week. Next. I'm excited to see what's going to happen this afternoon. Last Sunday, somebody got on the internet that has never partnered up with uh, the traveling ministry before and, got, and, and gave $2,000 to the Bible school in Nigeria. Before John Ben Dixon ever got to the airplane to leave and go back to South Africa. Fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before. So then uh, come Wednesday before church, a guy comes along and he buys a piece of equipment that I'd even quit advertising because I'd just kind of give up. And paid me what I wanted for it. And then took something else when he came to get it and gave me a little bit more money. Hallelujah. Kathleen says, next. <laughs> I said, next. next. See, you've got to make a choice. Do you believe God? Do you believe what his word says? Do you believe how his word is going to come alive? So then I quit advertising a, a, one of the bulls that Kathleen and I have for sale. Ah. <laughs> and a guy calls me on Friday and he says, do you still have that bull? I said, yes, I do. He says, I'll take him. Amen. Next. <laughs> I went and caught another one yesterday, praise God. I'm expecting before this week's over that he's going to be gone too. See, we have to live in a place of expectation that we know that God's plan is for us to have exactly what his word says. I'm not just talking about a word that John Ben Dixon spoke. But what he did was he spoke a word of prophecy connected with the Word of God. The Word of God is always, a word of prophecy will always be confirmed by the Word of God. And so when we look at that and we realize that everything that God says about us, what am I going to do with it? Turn to Psalm 92. Somebody say next. Yes. See, I'm not going to live from high to high. I'm not going to live from the high of this mountain down through this valley so that I can get to this next mountain. I'm going to believe that God's word actually is true. That's right. Because if it's not true, what are we doing? If it's not all true... Is any of it true? If it's not all true, then am I really going to have eternal life when this is all over? By the way, if you've got a question in your mind all of a sudden, come up and I want to pray with you after church is over. Because I'm going to tell you, you came too late to tell me that this isn't all true. You came too late to tell me that God doesn't plan for us to live in abundance. You came too late to tell me that His Spirit won't fill me and cause me to be overflowing, to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to see pain leave. I, I'm telling you, I expect when I lay hands on somebody, it's just done. Why do I expect that? Because I'm the pastor? No, I expect that because His Word says... These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name. I'm going to tell you, I was in, in May, and I've shared this with some of you. I got up, I mean, on Friday night at the crusade, I, just the Holy Ghost came on me, and it was right in the middle of, of preaching. And I got up and I said, I, come, I, I, I command all witches and wizards, demons, right now, to cease and desist over Abusa, Nigeria. And, and I saw something 
in the people that changed. The next day they were still talking about it downtown. You know what I experienced that night? I experienced the greatest attack of the enemy that I'd ever experienced. And do you know what we did with it? I, I was telling John last, last Sunday afternoon uh, what actually happened. Um, something I always do is I always make sure all the doors are locked. Because I just don't want somebody coming in my room in the middle of the night. And uh, <clears throat> if, if you don't lock your doors at home, that's okay. Um, that's between you and the Lord. He still puts his ministering spirits around. But I got up on, on the next morning, on Saturday morning, in the back door going to my balcony on my room was open that much. It was not open when I went to bed. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the devil tried to steal that night. He'd given me a He'd give, God gave me a dream about some things. And I called Kathleen in the middle of the night. And I said, uh, she says, what are you doing up? I said, we need to pray right now. We need to come against the attack of the enemy. And, and I'm not going to expound on that. I, I just, God had given me a word that uh, the enemy was trying to attack my family. And stop. The next day, while we're... Uh, dedicating a prayer camp <clears throat> one of our pastors got up and said I need to who had never been in my room says I, I need to tell you what vision that the Lord gave me at 1 a.m. this morning guess what time I called Kathleen 1 a.m. she says I saw the demons all lined up on this wall with their uh the bow hunters will appreciate this. Maybe this is why I'm not a bow hunter. <laughs> With their bows drawn and aimed. And, it, and the ones that didn't have bows, they had spears. And all of a sudden, somebody prayed and they all fell dead just like that. The wall that she described was my patio wall. And when I brought all the pastors to my room uh, later on that day to uh, just we, we ate together and, and shared some things. I shared some things with them. I, uh, I told her, she thought I was sending her out of the room. I just go out on the patio. And she walked out and went, it was your wall. See, I know why that room, that door was open. What do, what's the message in that? The message is God has a plan for your life. And there's nothing that can derail that plan if you'll cooperate with him. If you'll say, I will not back up. I will stand. I will have. Did you get to Psalm 92? Now some of you that have been here for a while know that Psalm 91 is one of my favorite psalms. Because it promises a lot of things in there. But always remember that the Bible wasn't written in chapters and verses. And so, as we read on, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on a lute and on a harp, with a harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the work of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when the workers of iniquity flourish... It is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, O oh, you, Lord, are high, or on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O oh Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Listen to this. But my horn 
you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous... Did you know what the Bible says? The Bible says no weapon formed against me will prosper. It doesn't matter what that weapon is. It's not going to prosper. Because God says this about you. Blessed, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. You ever watch a palm tree? Kathleen and I, when we were uh, first married, we lived in a town that... Uh, down this, this whole road, there was uh, palm trees. And I mean, I don't know how, how tall them things were, but they were 30 or 40 feet tall. And I watched the wind blow. Now, you know how, we, we know how the wind blows around here. Some place, uh, oh, Dakota and I was going along yesterday, and down, out, out here in Brock, blew, the wind, no harder than it blew last week, blew a tree over with that palm tree, it just kind of bends in the wind and comes right back up to that place. It doesn't matter how hard it blows. God's plan is for us to be rooted so deeply and know that what He, he says is true, that it'll just be like bending with the wind. You watch a guy that's, uh, that's confident when he's playing baseball and just he's up there to bat and a pitch comes too close. He just bends out of the way and stays right there where, we, where he's at. He's not moved. God plans for you and I to not be moved when there's attacks that come on our life. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in their old age. They shall be... See, I asked Sarah. She, she bared fruit in her old age. To declare, that means that it doesn't matter how young or old you are, God's plan is still for you to live in fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before. To declare that the Lord is upright, He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. What are you going to do? I choose to live in the abundance that God has for me so that I can have an abundance for every good work. I'm not talking about money right now, but I am talking about money. I'm not talking about mental abundance, but I am talking about mental abundance. Amen. I'm not talking about spiritual abundance, but I am talking about spiritual abundance. I'm not talking about abundance in good health, but I am talking about abundance in good health. See, God's plan is for us to live in total prosperity in every area of our life. God's plan is for us to have a fullness in every area of our life. God's plan is for us to have a fatness in every area of our life. And if I eat a little too much chocolate and I get a little bit heavier than I want to be, that has nothing to do with the fatness that God wants me to live in. I just got to have some, say that again, Gloria, self-control, discipline, and back off the chocolate. God wants you to live in a place that we have more than enough. As we live in that place, there's people on the outside that are looking for an answer. And I'm not just talking about outside this church. I'm talking about people that you work with, wherever it is, that are looking for an answer. They might be, they might be word of faith believers that are just discouraged. They might not ever have understood what a life with Jesus really means. 
They might not know Jesus as their Savior. See, there's people all around that are discouraged. You'll find that in my Bible there's written that there's uh, three kinds of people in every meeting. The unsaved, the unsure, and the discouraged. Now, I write in my Bible, it's my job to minister to those people in every meeting. And I write that because Glenn Smith told me to several years ago. But what I realized as I write that in every Bible, that I, when I get a new Bible, when I write that, it's not about a meeting, but it's about a lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle do you live? I choose to live in fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before. Because that's the lifestyle that will glorify my Father. That's the lifestyle that will cause somebody to say, uh, How did you do this? And when I say, It's Jesus. They go, Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect a preacher to say that. They say, Well, but, but how did you do this? It's Jesus. Because it's God's Word that comes alive in us. His Spirit brings that Word alive. But I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice whether I'm going to lay down and go, well, you know what? It ain't working today, so I'm going to bed. Or I'm going to get up and say, devil, you know who I am? Do you know how I... And I can promise you that I don't feel that way every day. I don't feel like going... But I have to make a choice whether I'm going to remind him who he is and who I am. And it's more important who I am because he already knows who he is. It's important that you and I realize there's a banner being made and I just was trying to figure out where to hang it that says fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before because we're going to keep that in front of our eyes. We're going to know that it's God's plan for us. I'm telling you that uh, I told the Lord about and you, and you can look around today and go, well, you know, that ain't about to happen. <clears throat> You just sit back and watch, because I'm going next. I told the Lord the other day, I don't care if I preach three services on Sunday morning. We're filling the house. And it's not about filling the house, but it's about seeing people get victory in their life to know that God has a plan. We just read in Psalm 92. Man, I love Psalm 91 because it's all about protection. But I love Psalm 92 because it says that there's fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before because God's plan is for you to have everything that will glorify Him in that place. And so I know that it's God's plan for us to have more than enough. You know what? I'm excited to see what's going to happen this week. Because uh, we finished strong last week. We're going to finish stronger this week. And it's God's plan for us to be that way. I, uh, I told James in Nigeria this week, I said, uh, there's a little bit of the money came in for uh, Bible school. I said, look for more pastors. It's, it, it's not where the budget is supposed to be yet. But we got... I look at, when I look at my flight schedule, it tells me how many days I got left. I got 56 days left before we leave for putting those uh, pastors in Bible school. And I know that my father is well able to make all things come to pass. That's the vision that we got to get. God's plan is for success for you, not for failure, not to fall short. His plan is for success for you. In all places. And I know that because that's what his word says. And all I have to do is cooperate with his word. And so when uh, Pastor Gloria on Wednesday night says next. Well I tell you that just burned in me. It's like next. We're just going to see what God's going to do next. How is he going to fulfill this part and that part? How is he going to bring vision in that place? I'm going to promise you that if you're looking for vision. You're going to get vision. If you're looking for how to get from here to there, you're going to get vision. Just ask our children's minister. She got in a place where she got vision. 
And she had to make a choice what she was going to do when she came home. I'm going to promise you, your kids are going to live and have great favor because of the vision that God gave her in that place. Because she put it in place. That's not about her. But it's about how we make a choice. How we're going to fulfill that plan and that vision of God. Stand with me. Say this with me. I choose today to live in the fullness, fatness, and abundance like never before. I choose today to live in what God's Word says. To cooperate with His Word. To have that Word come to pass in my life. Because I choose to follow Him. Because I choose to do what His Spirit tells me to do. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the Word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making Him your Savior and then making Him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior, and He is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching, and so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation, uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo, and uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to His Word. His Word says in Luke 6, 38, that He gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says, whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you, He'll take care of you and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord and Jesus loves you and so do we.